start with today's session. Uh, before I will uh, uh, start with the uh, today's topic, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Rebu Bodovalia and uh, I am working in Texicom since almost five years now and I look after the complete technical. And along with me, um, I have Rohan Shinde, uh, who is a regional uh, technical engineer for West region. And uh, um, then the second person is uh, Siddesh, uh, who is the uh, the manager for who look after the complete banking sector. So let me introduce uh, Siddesh also. Uh, for any bank related queries, you can directly contact him. So he's based out of Mumbai and I'll be sharing the complete details uh, of Siddesh uh, by the you know end of the session. Uh, Siddesh, are you there? Yes, Sibu. Right. Uh, do you want to say something? Uh, no, after, after finishing this call, we can just have a word. With sure. No problem. No problem. Okay. Right. Right. Great. <clears throat> so uh, let's start with today's session. So as you all know uh, that uh, if you have registered yourself, you will definitely get all the recordings and presentation after end of the session. And uh, so in today's session, we have taken up uh, uh, the topic which is related to the BFSI. So what do you mean by BFSI? It is basically your banks and the financial institutes, right? So for example, all the categories of government sector banks, private sector banks, or if there is any non-financial units, um, which also includes like NBFCs. So every, all the financial sectors comes under this topic. Right. So in today's session, as you can see, it is written as part one. So it means we have three different parts. So in the in the today's agenda, we will be covering most of the. Uh, these are the three basic things which we will cover in first session. That is the IDS in BFSI, which is intrusion detection system. Then what are the advantage of using Texicom system? especially in banking sectors and what exactly the solution we provide in the banks and the financial units, right? So we will learn and we will try to understand all these things in today's agenda. Then the next week session, as you can see, which is our part two, it will be on 2nd February. In that session that uh, that uh, consists of complete installation and the programming part. Right. And then thereafter, the third part, which is again the next week on 9th Feb, will be covering programming, handover checklist and maintenance checklist. So then we will conclude our complete BFSI. So it is divided into three parts just for your, you know, uh, suitability and you're able to understand it properly. That is why we have categorized into three sections. So it also, you know, give you some idea because sometimes what happens is if uh, you guys or if someone, if you are aware about intrusion alarm system, you might be not interested in one of any agenda, one of the training part means today we are covering only the basic parts and the application part of the BFSI, right? Then the second part is completely installation and programming. So maybe someone is interested in the programming part. So that is why we have categorized into three different categories. Part one, part two, part three. Whosoever is interested in whichever the part they want to take uh, or they want to understand, you can very much join. Right. So let's begin with what is BFSI? So BFSI is basically, as I've already uh, told you, that all the banks, whether it's a central bank, public sector banks, foreign banks, regional banks, or small finance banks. <clears throat> Every, uh, everything which is related to bank along with the ATMs that comes under BFSI, right? Then apart from this, uh, there are NBFCs, like uh, you have heard of Muthood Finance, then Muthood Fincor, uh, Mannapuram Gold Loan, uh, housing finance companies, right? Uh, India Bulls, like all these uh, are there. So round about 35,000 plus NBFCs are available in India. 
and if we talk about the banks there are around about 120000 bank branches along with 2 lakh of atms so all these conclude your bfsi right then coming to our customers if we talk about that uh, to whom we have already served in uh, uh, in the category of bfsi so these are some of the customers which are already using Texicom intrusion alarm panels. So uh, one of the very big customer is Axis Bank, where you know around about 3,500 branches installation has been already done. And uh, the Axis Bank is around four years old partner, right? So they are using Texicom system for more than four years now. Then you must have heard of Reserve Bank of India. So most of the Reserve Bank of India, if I talk about all the major cities, um, whether it's New Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Bangalore, all these RBIs, we have given the protection using the Texicom alarm system. So, you know, I will not take each and every uh, name because it is already uh, given on the screen. So I ju just for your information and just for your reference purpose, you can very much use these uh, you know, slide for uh, uh, for your you know for your clients, or if you want to give any presentation to the customers. So, uh, just want to give you uh, one more uh, you know uh, customer name that is uh, Muthoot. So, Muthoot is also uh, now using the Texicom alarm system. So, around about eighteen hundred branches are there where uh, they have started the installation, and by the uh, you know end of uh, uh, this financial year by the end of march uh, you know uh, will complete our installation for the north region so complete north region has 1800 branches where muthoot is also using the texicom intrusion alarm system now what is the need for intrusion in bfsi right so this is also very important terminology and you should be aware about that why we need the intrusion alarm system in BFSI. So as you all know that a bank is a you know uh, the place where customer deposit or withdraw their money, their jewelry or their other valuables. Now if we talk about banks, so bank is one of the you know the biggest customer where we provide the intrusion alarm system because of uh, various terminologies or because of va various compliances they need to follow. So one of the compliances that every bank must have intrusion alarm system, right? So that is why in the BFSI sector or in the banks, there must be an intrusion alarm system. Then employee safety. So what do you mean by employee safety? As you all know that in the banks, Sometimes what happens like in the rural area or in the urban areas also during the daytime, if any robbery is happening, right? If there, there is any theft is happening or if there is any uh, you know danger to the employee in terms of robbery, then the intrusion alarm systems helps that particular employee to protect himself. How? Just take one example. If there is any bank running, right? Uh, during the daytime and if robbers came inside the bank along with the arms with pistol or maybe with knife or anything just want to threat to the manager or to the cashier to take out all the cash so what happens so we can provide a solution to the customers to the employees of the bank in terms of panic button so we can provide the emergency buttons or the panic buttons so in case of any emergency that person can press the button and so what happens whenever he press that emergency button or the panic button that panic button will send one silent signal to the concerned authorities and the concerned authority will take the appropriate action so in that way you can protect the employees also so that is also very much important in terms of the safety of the employees Another term is that why we need an intrusion system in banking sectors. It is a proactive approach. Means if you are using an 
IDS system. So IDS is a proactive than video surveillance. So in video surveillance, I'm talking about the CCTV cameras, right? So if you uh, if you aware about the CCTV camera, as you know that the CCTV camera is only <coughs> a live capturing image, right? It is just capturing uh, capturing the image and uh, recording that particular uh, video for that particular time frame and it is saving in the device. That's it. But it is not doing any you know, activity or it is not informing the customer that whether intrusion is happening or whether the owner is coming or whosoever is coming at that particular area where we have the CCTV cameras. So that is why intrusion detection system is called as proactive. Proactive means at the time of intrusion, when it is happening at the bank, then Intrusion detection system will inform the concerned authorities and give the alerts to the central monitoring systems, right? So that is why we always suggest to use the IDS system because there is a myth or, you know, uh, the people are not aware about what is the difference between CCTV camera and along with the IDS system. So uh, they, they think that, uh, you know, everyone uh, just think that if we have a CCTV camera, we have given the protection, but it's not like that. So the CCTV camera is completely different with the IDS system. And as I have just told you that IDS system is more proactive than the video surveillance or the CCTV cameras. Compliance and mandate by RBI. So that's what I have just explained to you that why we need an intrusion system in the banks or in the NBFCs. So this is the compliance or you can say a law by the government of India, which uh, which I, if to be more precise is called as RBI. So RBI has given the mandate instructions that every bank and ATMs or if there is any NBFCs, there must be an intrusion alarm system, right? So this is also one of the compliance which bank has to follow. Then low bandwidth consumption and central monitoring. So this is also, you know, um, you will have a very good answer to the end customer that whenever they do the CCTV, uh, uh, you know, live streaming, and if we talk about the intrusion alarm system, intrusion detection system, live monitoring, both uh, will take some bandwidth, right? Because data will flow in their network and the data will be sent to the concerned CMS softwares. So whenever we are using the bank's network to send any data, which is related to the IDS system, it will take very low bandwidth, right? In KBs, so in kilobyte data, it will consume. So whenever it sends the data to the central monitoring system. So uh, this is also one of the very good feature which you can explain to the banking system. How it is used? Uh, guys, before I move here, uh, I just want to share one link which is uh, related to the, there is one question in that, which is very important for us to know which type of training you want means the duration of training you want everyone you want. Uh, I believe that, you know, uh, because as you all know that we are running this program, the weekly session uh, since more than one year now, right? And, uh, but we are still, you know, very curious to know whether you guys are liking this session, if the duration is more or it is less, if you want to, uh, you know, if you tell us about this thing, it will be very good for us. So I'm just sharing one link into the chat box. Just click on it. There is only one question you need to submit and I'll be very happy if you give the reply. Just a second. I'm just sharing the link.
so guys i am just giving uh, two minutes of time uh, please click on this link there is only one question kindly answer the question and submit it right i am just waiting for two minutes Yeah, uh, guys, I have just received six, uh, seven responses. Please take out. It will hardly take 10 to 15 seconds, not more than that. I'll be grateful. Thank you. OK, so uh, I got 11 responses. Uh, no issues, uh, guys. If, once you get the time, just click on it. Whosoever has not done so kindly give your response. It will help us to design our modules accordingly, right? OK, so let's begin our uh, session from where we have left. So how it is used? So means uh, how the IDS systems are used in the BFSI or in the banks or in the NBFCs, right? So it does it is used by the chief security officers, right? So as you all know that in the banks, uh, the audit happens in on a regular basis, right? Sometimes it happens uh, once in a uh, three months, quarterly, half yearly, or yearly. So it is very very important for the banks to make the IDA system up and running properly there should not be any fault or trouble because this is a security alarm system so this is utmost uh, requirement of the bank as per the security concerns right so the chief security officers are basically interested in terms of reports so uh, reports if i talk about is basically your event logs in the control panel in your main motherboard Right. So uh, whenever the audit happens, they generally take out the event re event logs from the control panel and through that they maintain the records. Right. So another thing is it is used for the security audits, right? And post-mortem analysis. So what do you mean by post-mortem analysis? It means by chance if any robbery happened in the bank along with the IDA system is already installed at the site still robbery happened right so this event log or the report which which I'm talking about here is very very useful why it is very very useful because what happened whenever any robbery happened nobody want to take the responsibility right so during that time what will happen your control panel, your IDS system will give you a proper authenticated report that what was the condition of your control panel, 
when the robbery was happening at the site right it will uh, give each and every detail to the chief security officer that whether the panel was in a faulty state or um, the power was off or if there is any communication trouble so everything a chief security officer can you know get to know through this report which is also very important in terms of the security of the bank then branch manager so as you all know that if we have an idea system in a bank or in the nbfcs we have to make some someone responsible in terms of who will operate your idea system right because we as a installer has provided the solution has done the installation every programming is done as per the requirement of the bank now the system is uh, who will use the system bank people will use the system right and uh, you know uh, one of the person is bank manager so bank manager should be aware of all the you know um, like it is called as handover checklist so there is a handover checklist where we have uh, you know five six terminologies or five six features that should be the end customer should be aware of all these features that how to do the you know system arm and disarm how to generate panic alarms duress alarms so in case if the panel is not getting armed then what should he uh, uh, he what he can do at that particular point of time some basic troubleshootings he should also know because just uh, you know what you can uh, do at that point of time if in the in the evening time if the bank manager wants to arm the system and let's say if any trouble is coming and he is not able to arm the system then all of the sudden no one will come to the site and start doing you know troubleshooting no there is only a bank manager available who is arming the system so he should be aware of little bit of troubleshooting which he can handle at the site right so there are some checklist which is also very very important from the installer point of view that during the handover process the installer must guide or inform or you know um, give the knowledge to the concerned bank person so that that person should able to operate the system properly okay this is very important in terms of bank people and as well as for the installer point of view then we have a central monitoring stations so as i have told you that in the in the bfsi the cms the central monitoring stations are you know one of the very important feature which should be there whenever we have the idea system in the banks so what do you mean by cms the central monitoring station so these are the 24 by 7 alarm monitoring softwares which do the monitoring of all the branches in any particular region or maybe in any particular city or maybe you can conclude number of cities all the branches can be monitored at one particular location and that is called a central monitoring station right so it all depends upon the capacity of the cms software that how many branches it can take a load in one go means in a single system how many branches it can do a monitoring and in the monitoring there are n number of features depending upon the requirement of the bank this software can include n number of features which includes number 1 alarm monitoring all type of alerts it should monitor whether it's a alarm whether it's a fault whether it's a tamper whether it's a low battery all type of alerts it should monitor then number 2 health check so what happened is health check is also very very important why for example if 
there is a you know audit is going on and the chief security officer is just doing a random check of the cms monitoring software and he asked the question i would like to know i have taken a, a as an example let's uh, let's take one example that there are 1000 branches which a cms is monitoring right now now the question from the chief security officer is i would like to know or i would like to see right now how many branches are live and how many branches are off means uh, how much how many branches are uh, causing fault as of now and how many branches are running properly so such type of you know uh, uh, bifurcation you can uh, figure it out you can take out the report through the cms software only so it will show you the data that out of 1000 branches this much are active and this much are not active right now and the the branches which are not active it will give you the reason also why it is not active so all these things you can very much grab or you can very much take out the information through the cms softwares right then alert the ert teams so uh, once the cms has received any um, alarm signals or any high priority signals then the cms will inform the concerned uh, you know uh, concerned authority so that the appropriate action can be taken so this is all about how it is used means number 1 is how the chief security will uh, use the ida system or how it is useful for chief security officer then for banks and then by the cms softwares right so cms integration this is also very very important to understand so guys what happened now as you all know that uh, you know uh, if if you are already aware about the bank tenders and uh, you know the all the process whatever uh, they follow for the ids alarm system so one of the requirement they have is that they want a integrated cms software right so as you know that in texicom also we have a cms software which is the name of the software is there are two software montex and texbase right so these two softwares are the uh, alarm monitoring software and these two software live demonstration i will show you um i believe it's in a part 3 so uh, when i will start my session part 3 on 9th february then i will show you the live demonstration of the cms software also but in texicom uh, the cms software is very you know uh, it's not you can say with multi function software right but in the banks sometimes they require integration of the cctv integration uh, cctv with ids system and sometimes they also want uh, the live demo uh, you know the live geographical view in the live map through the cms software only so all these such type of integrations is not possible with the texicom cms software so what you can do there are already we have uh, you know couple of partners who are already integrated with texicom system for example in the rbis we generally give ains software right so the ains software is already integrated with texicom now in the ains software apart from texicom apart from ida system there are n number of things the bank can do right so it is as per the requirement whatever the requirement is there for the bank we can provide a integrated softwares some of the name is like it is already written i2v securens right ains gvd so these are the some of the software which are already integrated and already running with the banks so texicom advantage now as you all know that you know in in the bank uh, whenever there is a tender process there are lot of competitors in the ids system now in the competition what will happen 
you have to figure it out some of the unique features and you have to tell to the customer that look we are using or we have a Texicom alarm system. So these are the advantages. Now what all advantage you will get if you have a Texicom alarm system? Number one is seismic sensor which comes under the special products, right? So what, what do you mean by seismic sensor? So I generally uh, tell to my friends, to my engineers during the you know training session that these seismic sensors are the advanced version of vibration sensors, right? These are not only a vibration sensor. Please remember this. So uh, the seismic sensors are basically used uh, used to protect the ATM machines, your bank's vault area or the lockers area, right? So as you have uh, saw ATM machines, right? In the Axis Bank, especially the uh, the server part in the in the ATM, what happened? The half part of the ATM machine is inside the server room, right? And on the back side of that ATM machine, we install this seismic sensor. So this seismic sensor, what it will detect? It will detect the vibration. It will also detect if there is any heat is generating when we are cutting the uh, uh, that particular machine, then the heat will generate. So our uh, seismic sensor will detect that heat also. And number three is you can mount this seismic sensor on metal object, concrete walls, on wooden object. So any type of material is there, you can very much use the seismic sensor, okay? Most of the installations, whenever the installation happens in the bank area, what the installer do? Instead of seismic sensor, they install the vibration sensor. But please remember that vibration sensor you cannot mount on the ATM machines. You cannot mount vibration sensors on the, uh, you know, uh, on the vault area, on the walls. You cannot mount uh, vibration sensors on the locker area, right? So these are some of the, you know, uh, means it is not meant for it. Vibration sensors are not meant for these locations. Only seismic sensors are meant for it. That is why it is manufactured. Then number second part is the advantage of using Texicom system is that the complete system, whether I'm talking about sensors, control panels or any type of communication modules all are EN certified right so what do you mean by EN certified so the this is the authentication of the product and how secure is your product so these are the certificates which we get from the third party organization it's not in-house created certifications, right? Whenever we manufacture, all the all the products are manufactured in UK, right? And once it is manufactured, then we send our product for getting the approvals and certificates from EN government body. So there's a third party uh, governing body who gives all these certificates, right? So our all the products are grade two and grade three certified, right? Another thing is superior wireless technology. In most of the banks, uh, there is a requirement of wired solution only, but sometimes, uh, you know, there is a requirement of wireless solutions also. As you all know, the Texicom uses Ricochet mesh technology, right? All the sensors communicate with each other and it, uh, all the sensors work as a trans receiver means the nearby sensor will take the signal from any other nearby sensor and it will boost that particular signal and transmit again so your each and every sensor will work as a receiver also so that is why we have a superior wireless technology then we have a hybrid and programmable panels so hybrid and programmable panels means 
we have a control panel which has inbuilt wireless uh, zones also as well as onboard wired zones also so it's a mix of both means in the same control panel you will get wired as well as wireless zones so this this control panel is the the name of the control panel is elite 64-w so dash w means it has wireless zones as well as wired zones both the zones you will get and that is called as hybrid right and along with the hybrid you will also get a onboard keypad on the control panel so you can say it's a package kind of panel where we have concluded everything wired wireless and onboard keypad also so such type of you know products you can uh, you can provide to the banks if you go with the taxicom system then digital applications so digital application what do you mean by digital application you must have heard that taxicom has already come up with the taxicom cloud services although banks are not very much comfortable to use the uh, you know third party cloud right or any other cloud which is not the part of bank but this is also one of the feature we have in case if you know any requirement comes from the bank side we can very much use taxicom cloud services along with that we follow all the guidelines whichever is the guidelines are there in order to use the cloud services we have all the guidelines and the certifications available for the same also right then cms integration so uh, whenever we talk about the cms integration you will find taxicom everywhere all the top most you know uh, the cms softwares are already integrated with taxicom alarm system where you can very much integrate cctv cameras fire systems along with the ida system apart from this there are n number of things but for the bank requirement i am just talking about as of now right so all these advantages you will get once you have a taxicom alarm system at the bank procurement so now i am talking about procurement so what do you mean by procurement it means that let's say um in sba banks i want uh, that you know the sba bank should start using taxicom system so what is the process there is a complete process of introducing a taxicom ida system in a bank and what is that let us see today prepare a and e specs so and i'll tell you it's a long process right uh, whosoever our installer partners uh, you know uh, are doing the banking sectors they must be aware of of all these things so number one step is that our installer partner because our uh, as a oem as a taxicom oem we never uh, be a front face for the bank okay all the things are done through our installer partners only right and we are in the background we are in the uh, we are as a supporting line we are we support our installer partners in each and every step during the procurement whatever the steps i am explaining here so prepare a and e specs what do you mean by a and e specs so as you all know that uh, um first of all whenever we propose the system uh, to the bank so so what they have to do they have to first enter all the details in their system that okay if we are uh, you know um, as an installer maybe my company name is rebu enterprises right and i am an installer i have approached to the bank and i am saying to the bank uh, the chief security officer that you have to list taxicom as a intrusion alarm system in your you know in your documentation so as a bank the chief security officer will ask to me to the installer that you have to give us the and e specs 
of all the products, whichever the products you want to do the listing, right? So as an installer, I will go to Texicom and I will ask for all the documentation of your control panel, all the sensors, all the communication modules. For all the uh, sensors products, I have a AND specification. Now I will go to the bank and submit that AND specs. Then what happened? In the same way, the chief security officer will take the details from other brands also because it is mandatory for chief security officer to uh, you know take the details from various companies available in the market. Then the st second step is bank will float the tender whether in the uh, you know uh, in the website or through the newspaper they will float the tender now in the tender what all details will be there it will be very much similar to the what we have given as a a and e specs right then pre bid meeting will be there so now what will happen whosoever the installer wants to take the participation in this tender process there will be a pre bid meeting so what do you mean by pre-bid meeting? It's basically a question answer session. For example, when we go through the complete tender, in the tender there is a complete requirement mentioned by the bank that they want a wired system, they want uh, to protect uh, uh, the doors, windows with the magnetic contact, with the vibration sensors, they want the protection uh, using the PIR motion, all these things are written as a specification in the tenders. Now, after reading out the tender, if there is any doubts in the mind of installer, or if they, they want to add something, or if they want to delete out something, right? Any type of queries are there, or if that is not possible, or XYZ queries are there from the installer point of view, then they will do all these question answers in the uh, you know, at a, a fixed location with the bank people, the, and that is called a pre-bid meeting, right? So once the pre-bid meeting is final, then submit the bid. So it means now the installer will submit all the documentation, the MAV, each and everything, whatever is required in the tender, right or if there is any modification done after the pre-bid meeting according to the documentation which is the utmost requirement by the bank and number one requirement by the bank the uh, interested installer will submit their bid right after that bank will announce the top three people the top three companies who has won the tender, right? So the tender basically given to the lowest price bid means the installation company who has bid the lowest price, the bank will provide the tender to that particular company, correct? And sometimes they take out three companies, lower bid one, the lowest one, then the second highest one, means uh, the higher from the lower one than the third one. So sometimes two to three companies, they award the tender, right? Then after that, procure material means once we have won the tender, let's say the Rebu installation company has, uh, you know, got this tender. We, we got that uh, bid and uh, the tender is, means the bank has selected us as a, lowest level bid right i have made now what i will do i need to purchase the product from the concerned oem company so that i will start doing the installation so the installation company will procure the material from the oem or the distributor and my engineers will start doing the installation work at the site once i have the complete product and the last thing is maintenance so the maintenance part is also uh, you know the part of this uh, tender 
that we have to provide the maintenance it is as per the tender whatever written over there is like one year or two years maintenance i have to provide then after that i can take the amc or accordingly uh, as per the banks uh, you know uh, will follow the rules so this is the complete procurement number one is starting with the a and d specs tender will be flowed by the bank pre bid meetings will be done right so pre bid meetings is basically a question answer session once the pre bid meeting is finished and if there is any change in the tender accordingly the installer will submit the complete documentation then bank will announce the name of the company who got the tender who has won the tender then that particular company will procure the material from the distributor or from the uh, from the oem and then that installation company will start doing the installation at the banks and then handover procedure and the maintenance part will be covered by the company so as you can see there are nine steps in this procurement and in all the steps oem company is you know working in the background along with the particular installation company right so the installer is a front face and oem is a you know uh, is working in the or you can say is a backbone so oem is a backbone of the installer correct threat and requirement so guys as you all know that <clears throat> if there is a uh, any uh, protected place specifically as we have we are talking about the banks and the financial institutes so what all threats are there right how intrusion can happen in all these sites so the number one threat is gas cutter or drilling machine protections so as you all know that you know uh, if if we talk about in the atm uh, in the atm areas what happened people try to you know drill or cut the atm machines so that they will take out the money or the cash from the atm machines so you can provide our special product that is called the seismic sensors for such type of areas right then the second type of threat is ac failure this is also very very important concern by the banks that what will happen if there is no power <clears throat> in the bank right such type of problems comes in a rural area in the village areas right where uh, we have a power cut of more than 10 hours 12 hours during the summer times so such type of questions bank people will ask you that is there any battery backup of 24 hours or 48 hours or during the ac failure is it possible if we will get the alert through cms software so yes very much in the taxicom intrusion alarm system we have outputs available and we can trigger these outputs whenever there is any ac failure and we can generate the alarm at the cms software so the cms team who is sitting at uh, that point of time will get the alert of power failure from the branch whenever the, it happens right and accordingly the action can be taken so all these failures which i am talking about or all these threats which i am talking about we have the answer taxicom has all the answers and the solutions available if you are using our system duress code so what happened if in a day time if any robbery is happening right and as you all know that in the bank there is a vault area and there is a a, a common area the bank area right where the general public comes and do the daily work now what happened a robber came inside the bank during the working hours and he tries to open the locker area but that locker area is you know uh, in a separate area and uh, it is 
completely armed as of now because what happened in the bank we generally provide two different partitions partition 1 and partition 2 so partition 2 is generally given to the lockers area and the locker area remain armed 24 by 7 as per the requirement we disarm the locker area and do our work and then again arm the system now as the robbery is happening and the robber tries to enter the locker area. So whenever we enter the code, we will enter our duress code this time. So this duress code will work like a normal code. It will do arm and disarm. It will not do any other thing, right? It will work as a normal code, but whenever the concerned person, the bank employee will enter the code, that is the duress code, a silent alarm will get generated and sent to the CMS software, right? And that says a duress code. So whenever the CMS, the central monitoring station, receive a duress code, it will trigger the authority and the concerned police department and the action can be taken very easily, right? Silent panic alarm. So such type of silent panic alarms we generally give to the bank managers, right? In case if there is any emergency, manager will press the button. It will not generate a local hooter or the alarm in the bank, but it will send a silent signal to the CMS station. So all these things are very much possible and uh, are the features of uh, intrusion alarm system, the Texicom alarm system. Tamper proof products. What do you mean by tamper? In a very uh, general manner, you know, if I talk about in the bank, I have an intrusion alarm system installed and we have a sounder or a hooter outside the bank, right? Now what happened? If any intrusion happens, so intruder will cut the wire of the sounder. Why? That it should not generate any alarm. When, and when the robbery is happening, Hooter will not generate the alarm, right? So if you have a Texicom alarm system and a Texicom sounder at the bank, if anyone tries to cut the wire of the Texicom sounder, then it will generate the alarm and your sounder will start hooting. And how it is possible? Because in Texicom sounder, we have an inbuilt battery also. So in case of wire cut, it will start hooting. So Texicom sounder gives you three type of tamper protection. Number one, wire cut. Number two, front cover tamper. Number three, back plate tamper. Correct? So back plate tamper, we need to trigger by using a tamper switch. We, use, we have to use an additional tamper switch, which we can activate by putting it on the back side of the tamper uh, uh, of the sounder. Correct. So tamper proof means all the products, whether it's a sounder, control panel, any other communication module or any type of sensor. If anyone tries to open the cover or trying to cut the wire, my system will give me a or give the tamper alert to the CMS station. OK. Anti-masking and clockwise PIR. So what do you mean by anti-masking PIR? So PIR motions are generally, uh, we generally mount in the ATM machines area or in the common area in the banks. And uh, the third and the most important one is the in the locker area, right? And you all know that robbery happens uh, from the insider, if there is any insider who has informed to someone that, you know, today we'll do the robbery in, from the bank and as an insider, what we will do, we will cover the PIR motion so that the PIR will not do any detection. But if the PIR is a high security PIR motion that is called as anti-masking dual technology, so anti-masking means if someone has masked that PIR or covered the PIR with a black cloth or 
with the you know wooden box then that pir will give me a mask alarm immediately okay so such type of secure products you can use with texicom if you are using it in the banks live system health status so this part which i have uh, uh, which i'm talking about the live health status you can very much see through the cms software which is integrated with the texicom system so this is also very much possible if you have a texicom alarm system panels programming and alarm monitoring over ip so you can very much program the complete system the intrusion alarm system in the banks over the ip network means if you are sitting in a remote location but because as you all know that banks has uh, the vpn lines right which is the secured virtual private networks so if you want to uh, program the control panels of any particular bank and you are you have access of the vpn network means you are maybe in different uh, bank branch but you can access the network then where uh, it is possible you can take a remote access and program the complete texicom system remotely that is also one of the feature which you can very much use if you have a texicom system dual path signaling so what do you mean by dual path signaling in the control panel we can provide a two different communication module right one is your ip module second one is the gsm module or in a different manner a gsm module and the second is a landline module or you can also give a landline module and a ip module so two maximum two communication modules you can provide to the uh, in the texicom alarm system why in case if the first communication module goes down due to xyz reason then you have a second communication module still active right by chance if you are using a gsm module and a ip module and your ip network goes down then through the gsm module my system will start sending the signals so that is called a dual path signaling timer based on off electrical appliances so what do you mean by timer based you must have heard of that in the banks they generally required uh, the you know night time night mode and the morning mode right so that is called as scheduling so you can very much configure this scheduling in the panel as per the requirement of the bank people correct and this is the typical boq so in the typical boq uh, more or less in all the banks this is what they generally required one by one i'll explain you so this is the control panel which is the brain of the system and along with this there are number one is sensors so number one sensor is smoke sensors so you can provide a smoke or heat detectors along with this control panel in the server rooms area second is vibration sensors for fixed windows panic buttons for the cashier uh, uh, person the ca the employees at the cashier counter or to the bank managers then shutter sensors so this is the you know uh, heavy metal grade 3 or grade 2 shutter contacts we have both the categories which is used for the rolling shutters at the main entrance point then we have a seismic sensors which we generally provide for the atm machines and in the bank locker area right then we have a sounder so texicom sounder will provide you three different tamper protections then we have a door sensors so door sensors are used for the any wooden door or if there is any glass doors and then we have a motion sensors so motion sensors as i have told you 
that these are used for the ATM machines area or in the uh, the bank locker area, right? So we have we have to provide a high security motion detectors so that there should be an, there should not be any loophole, and if there is any intrusion is happening, my motion will detect that particular intrusion very easily. Keypad. So keypad is a display unit. Sometimes we have a control panel in the server area and the keypads are at the entry exit points. Correct. If you ever visit any Axis Bank branch, then you will find once you enter the uh, bank, then you can very much see the Texicom keypad is over there. Right. So generally the keypads are provided at the entry exit points or sometimes in the manager cabin room. It all depends upon the requirement. Then we have a smart com or it is also called as IP module, right? So as as you all know that the CMS monitoring can be done over IP if you have a taxi com system. So this IP module can be inserted inside the control panel and once my panel is in the bank's network, then you can very much do the CMS monitoring or if you want to do the remote programming over the IP network, that is also very much possible. So this is what we have in a typical bank's BOQ and more or less it remains same, right? Right, so we have just, you know, um, ended our uh, today's session, which was uh, the complete uh, BFSI part one, where we have concluded number one, why the IDS system is required in the BFSI, then what all partners we have, and what is the, you know, uh, the procurement process. And after that, we have just saw the typical BOQ. Now, as I have introduced in the beginning, that for the you know the BFSI we have a sales manager available. Siddesh Savant is the name, and he based out of Mumbai. If 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 you want to connect with our sales manager, his email ID and the contact number is written over here. I'll be sharing this complete documentation and the recording after end of this uh, today's session. Uh, Siddesh, are you available right now? Yes, yes. 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 Do you want to add something, please? Uh, <clears throat> nothing has to be added, actually. And thank you, Ribus, to sharing the entire details to the partners. So I think so it's very helpful for everyone to um, promote uh, Texicom to our banking segment. I think so. Uh, so any ISO, it's call for everyone. So anything is there related with the banking, you just give me a call any point of time, or my mail ID also is mentioned as there. So uh, reach me out at any point of time. Uh, so do you have any query in um, apart from this we can discuss on the next segment so you just point out the um, uh, questionnaires with you on the next session so we'll get that question answers also uh, in terms of bfsi so if, uh, other than this also you can have, uh, ask the questions so for anything is just give me a call and you you can reach me out great great thank you thank you so thank much you. for everyone for joining Right, right, right. Thanks, uh, thanks, Sidesh. Uh, so, just a minute. Let me unmute, uh, so that you know uh, you can ask the questions if you have any doubts. Just a second, guys. Let me make the changes. Right, uh, guys, I have just uh, made the changes. You can unmute yourself and if you have any questions or doubts, please let me know. And uh, uh, again, I'm repeating. So I have shared the link in the chat box uh, that was related to the, you know, uh, the question which I'm asking. It's only one question. If you give your response, I'll be very grateful um, and Apart from this, if you have any doubt or any queries, please let me know.
so i believe uh, today we have ended our session uh, well um, you know um, <laughs> the time was defined till 12:30 but we have ended our session before that time it's 12:10 only so guys as as today's session was you know um, was only the introduction about that uh, why we ha we have to use the idea system in bfsi and uh, what was the uh, you know procurement process so it's a complete lengthy process which we need to follow along with our installer partners uh, so you know i believe i am able to explain you and if you have any doubts or any queries you can ask me right now but if there is no questions then we have to end our session right okay so i believe uh, there is no queries so hopefully we'll you know uh, we'll meet next week next wednesday again with second part of bfsi where we'll be covering about the installation and the programming part right so if you guys are interested you can very much join i'll be sharing the link very soon so thank you guys for your uh, time and attention stay safe thank you very much